good morning, everybody. Well, it'll be evening by the time you're watching this, but right now it's morning. Yeah, it's still morning. Um, so, Miriam's out of town, so it's just me doing the stream this week, so I'm going to do something very simple, just kind of an easy breakfast prep you can keep through the week and eat. Um, so we're making, we're gonna be making breakfast sandwiches. Um, so I got bagels from Einstein's um, because they have yummy bagels. And so we're gonna take those and basically make bacon, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwiches. And then I also got some fruit because I know personally if I don't dissect, not dissect, but cut the fruit down into ready to eat bits then it'll just sit there and rot all week, so we're going to cut some of that up and we'll just show you easy ways to do breakfast, not make it hard or complicated, so got a big one in the oven for myself right now because I'm hungry, and so yeah, we'll get started. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so this is one of my favorite ways to do bacon. So, pretty much, you preheat your oven to about 375, 400, depending on the strength of your oven. And then, um, you know, bacon of your choosing. And apparently my bacon package now does not want to open. So yeah. So, you line a sheet pan. So. Heat your oven, grab a sheet pan, line it with some parchment, or if you want you could take a cooling rack and do that. And then your bacon wouldn't necessarily sit in the fat, but I don't mind that so I just let my bacon kind of be. Alrighty, so... Personally, I cut my bacon in half, um, and for the application that we're doing, half works better. Um, you don't necessarily need the really long, full slices. So pretty much you're just going to peel your bacon apart, and then there doesn't need to be a whole ton of space between each piece, honestly. So. You would do the same thing if it was full slices. You'd line them up the same way. They would just be longer. Um, but like I said, this is one of my favorite ways to do bacon because this way you're just able to get um, you're able to get nice, really even bacon without having to stand over it and fry it and make your cooktop a mess and just make a huge mess in general. Bacon usually makes a huge mess. In the oven it doesn't do quite so bad, so it's one of the reasons why this oven method is one of my favorites. And it's also, this is also nice because then it frees you up to also be able to work on, say, the eggs on the stove and not have, you know, eggs and bacon and hash browns all on the stove. If you're doing something like just a regular breakfast or breakfast burritos or sandwiches or whatever. Um, so we'll get this in the oven. I'm going to wash my bacony hands um, really quick and then we'll get this in the oven and then we'll talk eggs. So I'm guessing that's going to take about 12 to 15 minutes, so set a timer for 12 minutes. 
Alright. So we have our timer going. And bacon's done. So we'll go ahead and start on eggs. So the way I'm going to do the eggs for the sandwiches is scrambled. Um, and we're going to kind of cook them kind of like you would a crepe per se. Um, so pretty much we're going to have a pan, we're going to have it heated. We're going to put either a little butter, a little pan spray, whatever in it. And then we're just going to take like a scoop of it, like a scoop of eggs and lay it down and it'll cook and we'll just literally wait for it to cook through and then we'll pull it off and we'll put it on a sheet pan. So it's a really easy way to do eggs um, for this application at the very least. And Stephen will come in once we start actually cooking the eggs. Stephen's going to come in and do some eggs over easy. I have always eaten my eggs scrambled um, so I if I really wanted to I could figure out how to do eggs over easy but since it is not anything that I ever cared to learn um, I just and also like my family we all eat our eggs scrambled so I never had really a true reason to bother with eggs over anything or sunny side up or literally any other method of egg cookery. And I'm going to do this whole uh, 12 pack, or 12, not 12 pack, but and the shell's being really difficult. Ugh. Cool. No shell pieces. It's a really tough shell to break. And when I'm cracking eggs, I always crack not on the side of the bowl, because what's going to happen is you're going to drive, like once you crack it, you're going to drive the shell into the egg and it's much easier to get shell in your stuff versus a flat surface. You just crack it, you're not really driving that shrapnel in there quite as much. And then you can pull it apart and see it's not in as much as versus like, let me show you on this last egg. See how that is really driven in there. So it's much easier if you're not paying attention to get a lot of pieces in your eggs. Usually I put in a little milk, um, or a little bit half and half, whatever we have in the house. Um, this just kind of gives it a little more depth. Um, yeah, so for every egg, probably about, you know, a teaspoon or so, so there's quite a few eggs in there, so. And then I also season my eggs with basically a season, kind of a season all type thing. Um, so it's just got a mix of stuff. But then that way your eggs just have some sort of flavor with them. And personally, I beat my eggs with a fork. I know a lot of people who do it with a whisk. This is just how I was always taught. And to me, it's just a little bit more effective. So. We'll just go ahead and break these up, scramble them. And they're not going to get 100% incorporated. We had a couple of really young eggs, um, so the whites are pretty strong. And if you notice, like, some of the eggs that cracked, like, you could see the white way more defined closer to the yolk. Those were a younger egg. And as eggs get older, the white breaks down. So depending on your application, the age of your eggs really matters. All right, so that's nice and incorporated. So we're gonna set this aside for right now. I'm gonna cover it. We're gonna set it aside. Um, 
and we will come back to this in just a little bit. say one of the key things about being in any type of kitchen working in any type of kitchen it'll make your life a lot easier if you just clean as you go um, a lot of people in culinary school had a real problem with that so it's a tough concept and it also just depends on kind of your personality how you work those kinds of things so I didn't say this initially, but we're also going to do some potatoes. Um. And this is really just for more of us to eat on the side. Um, it's less kind of um, going to go in the sandwich. So whenever I do potatoes, I line my board with parchment, just because, or not parchment, paper towels, gracious, it's still a little early. Um, just so that way I can catch, you can also do Miriam's trick of a plastic bag, it just depends on if you use a ton of plastic bags, and usually I don't. Uh, paper towels are definitely way more readily available in our house. Huh. So. And I am taking the skin off this potato. Just, you can leave your skins on if you want. We're using a Yukon Gold right now. So the skins are actually fairly nice on a Yukon. Um, and I actually really like Yukons in a baked potato type format. Because um, they're nice and they're soft and they're kind of buttery. And so, whenever I go home, we have, I basically binge on barbecue for like four or five days. Um, mostly because I grew up in Texas and so I don't get the same kind of barbecue here. So when I do go home, I mean, I will literally, like, that's all I'll eat for days, is just barbecue. And so, what's really yummy is we have, we'll take some potatoes, um, we'll bake them off. And there was once we only had Yukon Golds in the house. And I was like, okay, and so we baked them off. And what I like to do is I like to take the barbecue, because we get brisket usually. Oliver, out. And so we usually get brisket, and so what I'll do is I'll take um, a Yukon Gold, bake it off, and then I'll cut the brisket down into chunks, and I'll eat it with uh, the Yukon. Like, I'll open up the baked potato, and that'll just be how I eat the potato and um potato and brisket. It's a really yummy way. So now this other potato, this red skin potato, um, is different as well. It's got a different texture. It's a firmer potato. So like for instance if you made homemade potato salad this would be a good potato to use because it holds its texture. Whereas a russet you bake it and it gets kind of mealy and it, it kind of disintegrates for lack of a better term. Um, there we go. So I usually try to peel off the eyes, get as much of it as I can. It's not going to kill you if you eat it, but sometimes they're just not super awesome texture. Um, so super easy cleanup. But, like Miriam has said and shown, you could just as easily do that with a paper towel. So I'm going to take these potatoes down, 
do a nice dice on them and then we'll fry them up and we'll have kind of home style potatoes. So I took it, I cut it in quarters basically. Um, that'll be about the size and thickness. So go ahead and probably want a quarter inch dice all around. So we might not get there on all the pieces, but we'll get pretty close. And something that I like to do to have on the side is just a container ready to go to catch all the stuff. Um, yeah, so fairly uneven dice. This is not something you would show in culinary school. You try to get your potatoes very round and then square them off. And I mean, I swear you never knew potato cutting could get so complicated until you go to culinary school. Cut a lot of potatoes in my day. But I'm home, so I don't really care. Nobody's grading me on my knife cuts. So we're just gonna go with the general. But yeah, like I said, just having another container around helps keep your board open and clean. Um, because I will tell you, I swear there's nothing worse than a board uh, that has a bunch of crap all over it and you can't do anything about it with your knife. So yeah, I'm going to cut these down, do these in about thirds, cut it in half and then cut the half into three. Oh, I can hear the bacon. Alright. It is angry bacon. <laughs> I don't think you guys can hear that, but yeah. Bacon's cooking. That we know. Up and my timer's done, so I'm gonna finish just the cuts on this sucker. Alright, so let's take a quick peek at our bacon. That is 12 minutes in the oven. It's not quite done, so we'll give it another five at least. And I am currently baking at 375. Set a timer for six minutes. So I changed my mind, we're gonna do six minutes. <laughs> All right, let's finish cutting these potatoes up. So ideally what you could do also, so while that bacon's frying, cooking off um, and do your eggs. I would start your potatoes first um, if we're going to talk potatoes over eggs. So I would start your potatoes first. Ideally what we probably should have done is dice your potatoes first, um, get those cooking, and then come back to and then the eggs. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go half and Cosmo is apparently a very itchy puppy. Right. And you can also just square off wherever. A flat surface is always better to cut on for your vegetation. And sometimes you will have really slippery food like potatoes and ideally you always want to kind of have your hand in this claw type position however you know depending on the food it's not always super easy so I don't there are some times when I won't and if I don't have my hand in that claw position I'm just much more careful um, I don't speed cut quite as much and sometimes if I'm working with something that's slippery but I want to keep it in line, I'll do a cut and I'll put my index finger over and hold while I draw the knife out because otherwise you're just going to kind of screw up all of your um, alignment. And if you're trying to do something like diced potatoes, then that doesn't work so well. Alrighty. So... 
that nice off. And I will warn you now your hands will be very starchy. Because potatoes are starchy creatures. So we have our diced potatoes. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get those in a pan and we'll fry those up and we'll make some really nice kind of home style potatoes. I think is what they call them. Um, and because I have my knife and my cutting board and everything out, I got some produce while I was at the market. So we're going to go ahead and cut this down. Uh, mostly because I love fruit. Um, However, if I buy it, and I basically, if I don't come home and just break it down, it won't ever get broken down. So we'll kind of, I'll show you how to break down a can. Although I know melons are kind of one of those, melons are one of those fruits that's really kind of intimidating. Whoa. Alright. I went in a little too deep. So, as you saw, I just cut off both ends so I would have a flat surface and then ideally you just want to draw the knife down and around. Um, apparently this end is much softer and has much less green than the top so I'm going to flip because you can see I'm getting way more meat there than I was getting up top. Um, so I'm just going to flop the melon over and cut from the bottom to the top. So. If you want, you can try to get all the green off. Um, however, there does come a point where it's just not worth it anymore. Um, yeah. So, like some of these edges, you know, where you have the points and everything, like that's not the biggest deal flop the melon back over, come in over here. Melon is one of those you want to be really careful with when you're cutting, just because it is very slippery. And mine just is lopsided apparently as well. Yeah, so like this, it's not cooperating really nicely right now. And that's okay. And this would also be one of the times you want to, um, do Miriam's garbage bag method, which, you know, I didn't really think about, or plastic bag, garbage bag method, which I didn't really think about until, you know, she showed me. This is a very, very slippery water, or not watermelon, cantaloupe. So, I've done that, my really sticky hands. <laughs> Cosmo's apparently hoping for some melon dropping. Because he knows I'm messy. So he's just standing here waiting for me to drop food. Alright. I've got a plastic garbage bag. Timer is done. So let's take a quick hey. Sorry, I just thought the dog ate something. All right, that looks much better. Um, so I'm. This is how I like my bacon, and Stephen tolerates how I like my bacon. So. We're going to call it good here on the bacon. So that is good to go. So I'm going to finish uh, with the cantaloupe. I also have some peaches to do, but you guys have seen peaches a couple times because it's Colorado and it's peach season and Palisade peaches are everywhere. Um, so I'm just going to gut this out and then we'll Chop it and then we'll get started. Oh dear god. Oh, that's terrifying. So 
all of my Tupperware just came tumbling down out of the cabinet. That was terrifying. take all the seeds and stuff out, I usually take a spoon, just get in there. It's very much like a pumpkin almost. Um, your spoon, if it's a nice ripe one, will cut pretty easily through the flesh. Uh, if it's not, you're just going to have to work a little bit harder, which sucks. So I'm just going to dump all the seeds and stuff right into the bowl. that one done. Nice squelching noises. Ugh. All right. cantaloupe juice everywhere. <laughs> Alright, so that's done. So, I'm fairly unceremonious about how I cut my cantaloupe, because I do not expect it to be perfect, because it's a weird shape. It's hard to get nice, even, perfect cuts out of a cantaloupe. Um, And you'll see this kind of over index finger technique a lot for me. I really do it especially when I don't want stuff just kind of sliding out of place. Oh god. Guys, well, please don't eat that. Nope. Mm -mm. I don't want you to have to help right now, baby. Hey, out. Cosmo's just like hovering around my feet like, Mom, I know you have food that you dropped on the floor. All right, so once again, I had the container standing by for that, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to cut this other piece of cantaloupe, or this other cantaloupe in general. Once again, I have really cantaloupe hands now, but that's okay. Oh, that's just the one really cheap one. So this, because they're taller, we're going to do smaller pieces, so we still get about the same amount of cantaloupe. This was a nice ripe cantaloupe, and honestly when you're looking at cantaloupe and trying to tell ripeness, I usually try to go by the smell. So like on the vine end where it was connected. I usually smell that. I don't really go for the thump test as much. Um, I know that is a popular method, but I tend to just try and smell if the fruit's ripe. Smells usually a pretty good indicator of everything and just some soft pressure on it and see how ripe some certain fruits are. So. So, we are going to switch off and head over to start getting potatoes taken care of and eggs. Steven's going to come in and throw us eggs over easy, and then I will do the scramble for all the sandwiches. We'll put a couple sandwiches together and then we'll eat. So, see you in a few. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start the potatoes. I have a nice wide pan here. I also have some butter. The bacon didn't render as much fat, which is okay. Um, but if you wanted, you could use some sort of other fat. I just quite I happen to like butter quite a lot. So, probably about a tablespoon. We'll put it in in portions. Um, we've got this pan heating up to about medium, medium. A little more medium high. Um, so 
So yeah, like here's where the burner is. You get a little more sizzle. So I'm going to try and just make sure the pan's nice and buttered up before we throw all the potatoes in. And if you have a non-stick pan, you would not want to be doing this with a knife um, or any other metal bit that could scratch your pan. Uh, it's not the best, but, you know, let's be honest, just because I'm professional doesn't mean I'm a professional all the time. Sometimes at home, I'm just kind of like, meh, whatever. We're going to go ahead and dump our potatoes in. And I picked this pan specifically because it's wide enough to get me a nice flat layer of the potatoes. Um, so that way I'm not uh, stuck with some potatoes that are on top, not really getting any heat cooking, um, heat interaction. So I'm going to go ahead and salt and pepper these. And I'll probably put a little bit of garlic powder in here too. I'll do a couple of frying of black pepper. You can always mix up your fats. You know, if you want to do a little bit of butter, but you don't want it all to be butter, you can definitely go in there um, with some oil and do that instead. And then I have a tendency to stir most things with a spatula. Uh, but if you want to get really nice browning on these, you'll probably leave them alone. I just want to make sure there's enough fat in the pan that we're not getting a whole lot of sticking. Um, and like I said, you could definitely use olive oil, what have you, so I'm going to let these guys sit and cook for a little while. They'll take a little while. We've got some bigger chunks in there. Um, but this can be going while you're doing eggs um, or while the bacon's going. You know, this is one of those things that you just have to get started and then kind of let, let go. So I'm going to let this cook and we'll come back once we have some browning. Well, quickly, well, I have the chance to show you some other breakfast things, because let's face it, not everyone likes everything. And Haley really doesn't like runny eggs. I just have this thing about the yolks. I don't know, it's a texture thing. So I'm going to show you how to really quickly also do eggs over easy, because it's basically the gateway to every other sort of egg thing you might want to make that isn't like um, poached eggs. So, what? Oh, and uh, potatoes are browning very, very nicely. Mm -hmm. So, I've just got a pan here that I've already heated up. This is at like medium heat now, throwing some butter in, and I'm doing this the easy, lazy way with just one egg. Generally, best way to do this is with a like room temperature egg, but we're American, so we're stupid and keep our eggs in the fridge all the time. Now you just walk away. That's it. Just walk away. No, seriously, don't actually walk away, but stop fucking with it. So, the big important thing here is that we have that butter. See how it's starting to brown? That's not really necessary. In fact, it's not a great sign. It means you have to lower your heat a little bit or else you might burn the butter. But now that we're seeing these like bubbles right there in the egg, in the same way that uh, if you saw that with pancakes, you'd know, oh, it's about time to flip the pancake. This isn't quite ready to flip, but it's pretty close. We're going for eggs over easy, so we want the yolk to still pretty much be a liquid. So, this is the classic saute flip, because this is a pain in the ass to do without a real flip. So it's just edge it as close as you can to the edge, and yank it back. So, brown edges here, very, very nice. It means that we're probably going to have a nice uh, over easy egg. 
See how this is still sort of orangish, not full on yellow? As this gets darker and more like a bright yellow color, that means you're edging closer to uh, over medium or over hard. Over medium means it's going to be a little bit liquid. Uh, over hard means it's basically just a boiled egg. The whole thing is solid all the way through. And since this whole area has largely stopped bubbling, there's a very good chance that means this is already done. This is why I love eggs over easy. Because, yep, that is perfectly done already. That took what, like, maybe a minute? Yeah, it didn't take very long. So, there's your super easy if you don't want to actually make scrambled eggs in like a full on breakfast or whatever. There. I mean, you should make some toast with that. It's something to sop up the yolk, but. And season it. Season's pretty necessary. I will now return you to Haley. And with that, our potatoes are nice and toasty. See, they can really nice brown edges. So pretty much with these, every once in a while I came back and I flipped them around. But overall I just left them alone. That's really the best, excuse me, thing you can do with those eggs, or with the potatoes. <laughs> um, is just leave them alone, let them brown, because if you touch them too much they're not going to brown right. So, yeah, just put them in the pan, give them a toss every once in a while, but otherwise, pretty easy. So, potatoes are done, bacon's done. Steven's egg tutorial is done, so we'll start on my egg tutorial next. See you in a minute. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started with my egg demo. Um, still using the same size pan. It's a nice size pan. Um, and it should be pretty easy. And you could do this with butter if you wanted to, it just kind of depends on what you want. set up in a little kind of three stage holding area. Um, so I'll use, we, don't, we need just a little bit of nonstick with this. So you could use butter or you could use some pan spray. I find the pan spray works just as well. Um, it's probably a little bit too much fat for this first one, but that's okay. So I have about a third of a cup scoop right here, and that's just about an epic. So we'll let this sit and cook, kind of swirl it around so you make sure you get fairly even coverage. And a third of a cup may be too much, but we'll just work with it. So as you can see, it's bubbling. thing we have multiple measuring cup sets. So now let that brown just a little bit longer. I'm gonna get my oh, so sad. So I'm gonna take a spat. Just kind of work around the edges, make sure those aren't stuck. And this you could try and flip if you wanted to. I uh, don't know how well that would turn out for you. Probably not great. Um, just waiting for that last little bit of egg to cook. There it goes. It's kind of on the side and stuff. 
So ideally you want to get this to where you can just cook it in kind of one shot. It's the wrong tool for that. So a tool that works well for eggs, or for this in general, is a... Uh, it's going to be a little crooked, that's okay is what they call a fish spatula. This one doesn't have quite as much curve. Honestly, I'd really like a nice flexible fish bat, but you know, beggars cannot be choosers. So that should be cooked through all the way. So we'll just slide that sucker off. There's still a little bit of fat in the pan, so we're just gonna use that remaining fat. We're gonna try the quarter of a cup this time. So, like we said, this is a pretty easy method, and this is specifically for the breakfast sandwiches that we're working on. You might not necessarily want to do this for all of your egg-based applications, um, but for this one specifically, where all you're really kind of looking for is a round of egg to put in the middle, this application works just fine. Next time this goes down, I'm going to show you a little trick to kind of get more egg cooked and then let it flatten. Um, and we have about a medium heat on here right now. I fold these over anyway for the sandwiches, so this little fold's okay. And depending on what size sandwich you have, that also makes a difference. So we'll dump that sucker out. Put a little bit more fat in there this time. Because we're running a little bit low. setting up, what you can do is kind of just make the general a circle. And yes, it might not look as pretty and whatever, but your egg is going to get cooked just a little bit better in that. I just turned into straight scrambled. Honestly, this worked a lot better for me the first time. Ah, since I had more pizza or what. Um, and honestly, you could also just dump some scrambled eggs on the sandwich and call it good. The discs were just nice and easy. Um, so that's why I use them. And you know, if you like capping you like a over easy egg, those would be just as easy to get on the sandwich.
Yeah, I might just do scramble. This time around. It's not wanting to cooperate and cook in a circle, so I'm not gonna force it.
so that concludes the egg portion of this program. Um, I'm gonna clean up my station really quick because I was doing some peach dissection. So, once that station gets cleaned up, we'll come back, we'll build some sandwiches, and that'll be that. All right, we'll see you guys in a minute. Bye. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and build our breakfast sandwiches. We have everything we need. We have our egg, bacon, cheese, bagels. Um, so it really just kind of depends on what kind of sandwich you're building. Um, I mean, honestly, so like... So I usually do some egg, a couple pieces of bacon, and then a couple slices of cheese. And you can use whatever cheese you like. Um, this is just cheddar, sharp cheddar. And I built that one. Oh, whoops, I built those wrong. Okay, here we go. Now they're both right side up. And then you can keep these in the fridge. Um, I put them in the freezer just because they are very easy to warm up. I just take them out in the morning, wet a paper towel, wrap them, and then cook them for a minute, minute and a half. And it rewarms the whole thing. It's basically just like kind of a Jimmy Dean type breakfast sandwich. Um, but you made it yourself, so if you want to season it in any way, or, you know, if you want to do sausage instead of bacon, or turkey bacon, or, you know, what have you. And so for these, for freezing them, I think scrambling works best. Um, you might be able to do an over easy egg, but single serving, um, you can also do them in gallon Ziplocs, and do four of them in there, and then just grab one out. But yeah, it's a really easy, simple thing. And then I know we didn't, you know, put these in anything, but you could also do the same thing with breakfast burritos and, uh, and put the potatoes inside of the burrito and, you know, you can change it for cheese, do your eggs a little differently, or if you don't like egg or egg white only or whatever. I mean, there's a ton of possibilities you can do with this. And so, with that, that will be it for us, um, for this stream, for this cooking stream. So, do, do. so yeah, what we did, breakfast sandwiches, so we did um, eggs, bacon, bagel, cheese. We showed you a couple ways to do eggs, scrambling, as well as over easy eggs and then we also did some home style potatoes in case you don't want to shred potatoes because let's be honest it's really not all that fun um you know there's a ton of different stuff you can do with these so just again some easy some quick simple breakfast things i mean sometimes on a sunday i'll do this or i'll do whatever meal prep for the week um i did some fruit cutting because that helps me a ton during the week to actually eat fruit <laughs> or eat vegetation of any sort because if it's not done I don't really feel like going and you know having to cut it open and clean up and like it just makes it hard so this is an easy way to you know not be going out every meal <laughs> um so once again uh yeah breakfast sandwiches easy peasy lemon squeezy so we will see you all next time. Bye.